Hey guys, so in this video, I'm talking about ExpressVPN on Android and how to use this VPN. So when you first open it up, you're going to get this page. You have your big connection button on the top. You have your location bar where you can select the country and server you want to connect to. You have your recent locations and some data about your connection, including the amount of time you've been using it and where you're currently connected to, including the IP address of your connection. So let's say you wanted to choose a different server. You would just click here on this location bar. You would get a list of the different countries. And if you would click on the arrow for some of these over here, let's say the US, you'll have more options for more servers within that country. So you can just click on one of these, let's say Atlanta, and then you'll automatically be connected up at that location. Once you're connected, Connected, you have these shortcuts here on the bottom where you can just quickly jump into whatever application uh, you want to go to using the VPN now. And you can also see that on the bottom now it'll say that the IP address that I've connected to is different and the server is now in the USA. So this is just basically the home page of ExpressVPN. It's pretty simple, not too much going on. And that's pretty much what ExpressVPN wants. They want a very simple and easy to use app that doesn't really take too much knowledge to get a hang of that really anybody can just get the hang of it and use a VPN very simply. Now, if you go over into the next tab here on the bottom bar, you're going to get the upgrade. So they have an option coming soon for a dedicated IP, which is basically your own IP address specifically for you, because a lot of the IP addresses that you see over here, let's say, or pretty much all of the IP addresses that you see over here on the bottom, these are going to be IP addresses that are going to be shared by anybody using ExpressVPN. You're going to be using these same servers and these same IP addresses. Whereas if you get a dedicated IP, you're going to get your own IP address that's unique to you. And that can have some benefits if you're trying to access a website that maybe detects VPN usage or detects different IP addresses like banking websites or certain online gambling websites, then they're going to be tracking your IP address. So having a dedicated IP when you're using a VPN at times can be very helpful in order to just avoid anybody from ever noticing that you're using a VPN. Now you also have here the advanced protection features where you can access this also in the settings. Basically, you're going to get the option to block different trackers, malicious sites, ads, and adult sites. So you can block all of that with this VPN as well. And there's also an add on for the password manager, which it stores and autofills all of your passwords um, and it does it securely. So you also have that add on. Now you have the help. That's pretty self explanatory. And then let's go into the options. Oh, one thing I should mention about the help is that ExpressVPN's live chat customer service, I've used it a bunch of times already. They're really good. You don't have to wait very long at all in order to speak to a representative. And you can just get going speaking to a representative very quickly and very easily. They're very helpful. And it's probably one of the best customer services of a VPN that I've used. So I definitely like their customer service. They're doing a good job there. Now, going into the options, you can also access here the advanced protection features, the same one we saw before. You have your split tunneling. With split tunneling, you can choose exactly which apps you want connected to the VPN or which apps you don't want connected to the VPN. And all you'd have to do is just click on the little plus. And now the next time I reconnect, it's going to not have Adobe Acrobat connected to the VPN if I wanted that. So you can just toggle this by clicking on the plus and minus buttons. And sometimes you may not want everything in your app. And you know, there may be times where you might want only your Netflix app connected up to the VPN in order to access content that's only available in a different country, but you don't necessarily want everything that you're doing connected up to the VPN. So split tunneling will help you out there. Now you have your auto connect options. You know, you can just set that up and you have other settings. Now here's where you're going to find a few different things. You're going to have your network protection. This is what's called a kill switch in other VPNs. And what this does is allow you to control if you're going to be connected to the internet when the VPN is not enabled. So if you're on a network that's not very secure, like a public Wi-Fi network or something like that, then it's a good idea to have this enabled to ensure that you're only going to be using the internet together with the VPN. So you can have that enabled here. You also have an option here to set up your phone that you will only ever be able to connect to the internet together with the VPN. And you also have the option to limit access to devices on your local network. So that will be here in the network protection settings. You have your VPN protocol and the protocol is basically like a messenger service between your VPN and the websites that you're trying to access. So some may be more reliable than others. Some may be more secure and some may be faster than others. But in general, the best with ExpressVPN is going to be lightweight UDP. That's the one I have set, although you can always go with automatic and it will just choose the best one for you. Now, lastly, over here, you have the option to set up those shortcuts in the 
the home page menu that just when you connect it shows you the different shortcuts for different apps so you can set that up over here and you also have the option to enable the summary the data of your connection that was in the home page you can set that up here and also this is really neat you can set up or enable and disable the ability to take screenshots of the expressvpn app so that will just help keep your data a little bit more secure and private and that's pretty much all there is to the expressvpn app now this is a really solid vpn you're going to get really fast and stable connections with expressvpn personally it's my go-to option and the one that i use the most although there are some other pretty good vpns out there if this is not something that is maybe your speed maybe you're watching this you want to find something a little bit different then i do have some other options for you and of course you'll be able to find more about all of these vpns in the description down below but two other options that i really like a lot and i've tested out a lot of different vpns are going to be nordvpn over here with nordvpn you're going to have a lot more features you're going to have this interactive map interface you're going to have different servers that you can connect to specialty servers such as p2p specialty servers for torrenting onion over vpn that will allow you to connect to the dark web and the onion network without even needing the Tor browser. You have obfuscated servers that hide the fact that you're even using a VPN and double VPN that connects you up to two different servers before getting to your final location. So that just gives you an added layer of protection and security. And this is really too much to go into in this video. So I'll be sure to leave a link for a full in-depth review of NordVPN and all of these VPNs actually in the description below in case you want to check that out. But NordVPN is another really good option, especially if you want a lot more features and a lot more customization and flexibility when it comes to your VPN. NordVPN is really good. Now, if you're on a budget, then there's always Surfshark. Surfshark is the cheapest of these three, but at the same time, it comes with a lot of high level features that you don't normally find in a VPN at this price point. So you're going to get multi hop, which is kind of the same as the double VPN feature in NordVPN connecting you up to two different VPNs. You're also going to have an option for the dedicated IP that I spoke about when it came to ExpressVPN. So you're going to have some pretty advanced features with Surfshark. But in my opinion, I just haven't found it to be as reliable in terms of keeping a stable connection and being as fast when compared with NordVPN or Express. So overall, if you have a little bit more money, I would definitely recommend going with either Express or Nord. But if you're tight for cash, then Surfshark is still a really solid option. So that's all for this video, guys. Again, if you want to find out more about any of these VPNs or get discount links that will save you some extra money in case you do want to try any of them out, you'll find all of that in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and I'll see you in the next one.